How are you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah. Doing well. Yep. Um. So we were talking a little bit about the reality of the effects of a pandemic. Yeah. On our mental well-being. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you had mentioned that you've you've attended several webinars on this. I have. I um, have probably at this point too many. <laughs> <laughs> And I assume the reason that you've been doing that or that you've been invited to those is because of your service to the poor and vulnerable. For sure, for sure. How yeah. these things will affect. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's an interesting thing because I think as, as we start to reopen and now that we're in phase two, we have to face two realities, mm -hmm. right? We have to face the reality that we are, um, that this happened. Yeah. And then we also have to face the reality that now life goes back to normal-ish, right? Yeah. That we start to get back into the flow. I mean, I've seen outside, like, the traffic is heavier. Yeah. Right? Um, I think I like to think of it uh, more as we get back to really living our lives, mm. you know, in whatever capacity that that looks like, you know. Um, uh, if you think in terms of, I think it's easier to think in terms of, like, a, a hurricane coming through. And so, you know, people get about the business of living their lives and it just looks a little bit different. That could be rebuilding a home um, mm. or it could just be cleaning up the yard. You know, it could be people can be in varying degrees of that um, and dealing with the, the outcome of that, you know. Yeah. And yeah. so even as if you think in terms now of the pandemic, we just we're, we're, we're we get on with living our lives as we have done during the pandemic. And um and it might look different, but, um, you know, uh, getting back to, um, you know, a normal way of living, I think, um, continues to put, uh, I don't know, a psychological block on <laughs> the fact that this pandemic has happened and some things have changed and entering into that change, being changed by it, and then just continuing to live into that. Right. Does that make right. sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, like it's not just a, like a bad dream that you can right. chalk up as this was a bad dream, it happened, right. it's over right. now. Right, right, right. Um, it's something that I think challenged, um, you know, brought about sacrifices that we, we weren't used yeah. to. Um, I don't know, taught me about my relationship with God a little bit For better, sure. as we've talked about mm -hmm. um, before. And then also relationship with other people right so it's it, you can't just return to normal right, right in right. the same sense like you can return to the normal tasks of of life but right there's right. a change yeah because i think that the final piece of that is you know uh, like you said and that there was very i think very well uh, very well put um during the pandemic yes uh you know we have time to think about ourselves and our relationship with god there was a, a bit of a change with that with not going to mass and so what does that mean how do i still encounter uh Christ at a, at, a, at a level that changes me how do I how do I grow through this and then with from there um, to the friends and family that we know you know incorporating them back into the daily plan of things um, uh, and what does that mean you know how, how how do I relate to them especially if I have a aging grandmother an aging mother or you know a young child uh, making sure that they're safe but then the last piece of that I think is uh, getting back to living with society <laughs> in general, you know, with all of the other people that, that live in the world and, and what is that what does that look like and what does that mean? And, and a part of that has changed and, um, and uh, as, as one gets back out into their regular routines or uh, of, of living in the world, you know, how can I change with that even? And so it feels like a lot of change. Mm -hmm. Change in my relationship with God, change in relationship with my family, and now change in how I interrelate with society. Um, and, uh, and what does that look like? Yeah. And I think one important thing to remember is that, that all of that is happening so we can take a deep breath yeah. and recognize that we're navigating a lot right now. Uh -huh. um, I don't, you know, do you have any tips from the, the webinars that you've... Um, <clears throat> well, I think that, uh, number one, just recognizing, you know, I think that that's key, recognizing that this, this is difficult, and, um, and it is a lot for the mind to sort of wrap its head around, you know, and that, uh, that with any stage of um, trauma, and, and, uh, and this would be considered traumatizing <laughs> a thing to go through, mm -hmm. that one recognizes that and uh, moves forward with, um, with all of the hope and the, and the, the helps that they had of, 
of their own uh, spiritual life and the encounters that they've had of God, uh, you know, in the past. And uh, moving with hope, God is uh, infinitely bigger than any trauma we have. And uh, I was just talking to um, Pat downstairs. She's manning the phones for us today um, and letting her know that, you know, something I had to learn is that uh, Christ's love um, can span six feet. <laughs> mm. You know, Christ's love can uh, is larger than um, than uh, somebody having a mask on uh, or both people being masked. And so the Lord's uh, love cannot be constrained or in, uh, in, in various ways it is, uh, is all-encompassing and, uh, and it is and it still um, uh, resides even in the midst of trauma and, uh, and there's great hope, you know, on the horizon. And so, you know, I think it's just recognizing, you know what, this is tough. Uh, it involves growth. Uh, any sort of change that we have to make within ourselves is tough. It's hard. Um, but uh, with any change uh, comes great beauty, you know, and you can look at the things of nature to see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I like, I like the way you put that about God's love extending beyond these things. Yeah. Because something I've noticed, obviously because you can't see most of someone's face you can still see yeah, their eyes for sure and especially as i've been an usher at church and greeted people without mm -hmm. being able to shake a hand or give a hug i've, I've made closer eye contact yep. right with the other mm -hmm. and uh and there's something about that 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 yeah. you know even beyond all of the things that we have to navigate like god's love can still shine through mm -hmm. people um, despite the roadblocks. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody, you mentioned uh, being at Mass. Somebody said to me as I was seating them at Mass uh, this past Sunday, uh, you have such a beautiful smile. Mm. And I had a mask on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've always loved that about you. You know, and I thought, you know, and here I was masked, and, um, and you know, I sort of, uh, you got a giggle out of me, a chuckle, and, um, and I sat him, and I thought, you know, that's a fascinating thing, but I think that, that when one is smiling, even with a mask on, the eyes uh, reveal all uh, that's within the soul, really. Mm -hmm. And I think that was another key piece from some of the webinars that I, I've been watching or the Zoom conferences on, on this issue, is that you can tell when, um, when somebody's struggling. And, um, and uh, if, you, if you know of people in your family who are, you know, the key piece is to ask that question. To not be afraid to say, are you okay? Are you doing well? Uh, is there something, you know, that you need? Yeah, and, and I think that's something that I've been reflecting on is how do I, as, as I continue to have more to do as far as uh, what I was doing before, right? Mm -hmm. So I've, I've continued to, to keep doing ministry in various ways, right. but now a lot of the ministries, um, we're getting ready to do confirmation, like mm -hmm. things are opening up again. How do I continue to maintain that person-to-person true vital interaction yeah. amidst all the to-do lists and all the right. emails and everything right. else right how do we how do we be there for the person right. i think there's been such a great focus during this time about be there for other people call them if they need something yeah. Yeah. notice when someone needs a, a positive word or right. or mm -hmm. um you know call your family be in touch with them yeah. eat dinner together all these things that are of such great value yeah. and and i don't want to lose that yeah. Right. So how to how to hold on and grasp onto not grasp but um, intentionally. Yeah. You know something I think uh, because I am incorporating more people into the outreach office, uh, welcoming them back into ministry um, as the need arises and they're willing or able to come into the office. And I think one of the things that I have noticed uh, because I have the same question, you know, am I ready for <laughs> things to go from? Uh, this uh, this uh, uh, beautiful um, uh, uh, cadence isn't the word I'm looking for, but this just this this nice uh, rhythm that that we're in of 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 being just being you know in the world and doing doing work without the frenzy. But um, and so as I'm inviting this back into my life, I think what um, uh, just this morning, you know what. Uh, what is it uh, about the frenzy that was so frenzied and uh, and early and, and we're in the early stages of this but for me I think I think I have to look at the um, the to-do list as 
um, as my uh, intentionality, you know. And so uh, if the day holds a lot of emails, and they have to be very intentionally done, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so that they're not the, um, I don't want to say obstacle, but that's kind of what, what I, the word that I would use for it. They're not the obstacle to my being with somebody, but that is how I'm called in this moment to be with somebody. And so I think just, again, if I, if I look at this pandemic and psychologically what it can do to one, seeing people masked and at a distance, then I think I can use that same psychology with mm -hmm. my to-do list. Sure. The to-do list, um, psychologically, I think for us pre pre uh, COVID was frenzy, activity, obstacles, knock them off, get them out of the way, so we can get to people. And now that um, people aren't front and center necessarily all the time, uh, because uh, we have to you know keep our distance and, and try to have as limited contact as possible. Um, I think that the to-do list can can be looked at through a different lens. Mm -hmm. You know, that it's not psychologically that thing that I have to get out of the way, but maybe I engage with it in, a, in with a little bit more intentionality. And you know what? I make time to, instead of just uh, letting somebody I call know what I need from them or what they need from me, but maybe I take time to make a block out a, a longer space for that call to be more intentional. You know, yeah. how are you? Um, if I think of my Syrian friends that I walked with, they would spend an hour with me. How are you? Yeah. And then comes the business. Right. <laughs> <You know>? right. <clears throat> but I think that's well said because we have, you know, just as you said so well earlier, God's love surpasses yeah. the masks, the six feet distance. Yeah. So too, God's love can surpass the email, the text, sure. right? Sure. The phone call about logistics. Yeah. God's love can, can go um, can transform that into Absolutely. a moment of encounter. For sure. And not that it's the ideal. The ideal is right. that we're together, right? But uh, oftentimes that's just not the, the way the world is, is working right Well, now. and I think that the ideal, the ideal, honestly, if we think about it, isn't even necessarily, I mean, I think it's intimacy. Mm. I think the ideal is intimacy. And <clears throat> so, yes, is that easy, more easily reached face-to-face? Um, -face? Yes. But um, can we be face to face and not intimate? Yes, and I think that's more tragic. Mm. <laughs> it's more tragic to be face to face and not intimate right. than it is to be separate. And so, um, uh, so if one is separate, you know, if we if we take this situation that we're in, I think that um, what we're doing has to have a, a particular intimacy to it. Um, that. Um, and, and even though, you know, maybe we're not face to face, you know, and sometimes, you know, we can hear Zoom isn't the best way. But if we're intimate, you know, if we pay attention uh, to, what, to, to what is happening around us and, and what level we're willing to, to meet people at or to take people to or to, to engage at, I think that that, that is key. And, and I think that that can be achieved um, uh, whether we're face to face or not. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, albeit it's easier and more natural for it to happen face to face. And we can take, you know, God as an example of that. <laughs> sure. You know, and I think that's something that, you know, that I learned in this pandemic, you know, um, where are you, God? The mass is gone. My whole world is upside down. <laughs> number one, I'm a creature of habit, but number two, uh, I know the truths of the faith. And so now this is taken from me, but God says it's about intimacy. It's about relationship. I've got, I, I, and, and while um, this is gone for a while, uh, let's achieve a deeper intimacy, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so I think, you know, if I take God's cue from that, I can say that, you know, it's about intimacy and we can be uh, intimate with the other in all of these other vehicles. If we uh, if we at first are, have been relational with them, for sure, yeah, yeah, that's that's really well said, and, and intimacy being uh, truly known by another yeah. and knowing another, yes, right? yes, yes. I've been I've been reading a little bit more about that when it comes to God, yeah. Yeah. Um, and when it comes to our human desires. Oftentimes, we desire to be known, but we replace that with a desire for fame or for attention. Yes. But that's not actually what we want, right? Even those with great no. fame are not happy because no. they want to be known. Yep. Uh, and, and we want to also, we have a natural desire, I think, to really know someone else. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. If we dig deep within ourselves, there's, there's that For desire sure. to be known and to know another.
that for sure. for sure. So I think that's I think that's well said. I think every every interaction that we have with another can mm -hmm. be an opportunity for that getting to know yeah. the other. Yeah. So awesome. Well, thanks for joining me for another coffee. This is our afternoon You're welcome. coffee. Yes, today, it is. Thank you. Well needed. Yeah. Indeed. <laughs>